Hello and welcome back to another episode of Gary's Garage. Last time round we finished up underneath the car, getting ready to pull it back on its wheels. Today I'm going to get the top and the front of the car back together enough for my new radiator to be made up. So let's make a start. The first thing I've realised is that the charge cooler radiator is in the wrong place. Not just it's on top of the engine, but the pipes need to go underneath this front support bar. So I need to try to get the charge cooler radiator down in the right place. So that will either be try to squeeze it through the gap here, take a hose off, or take this front panel off again. So let's start from the easiest, which is gonna be try to squeeze this through the gap, working towards the most difficult and see which one works. Okay, thankfully option number one worked. So next off, let's put in the Y piece coming off the turbos into the charge cooler, back into the inlet. With that back on, the next thing to do is finish hooking up the vacuum lines onto the inlet. So let's do that and I'll talk you through which one is which. Okay, coming off the back of the inlet manifold here are these two. The big one goes off to the boot and that's a vacuum line for the brake servo. This small one here goes off to the ECU and the boost gauge inside the car. This slightly fatter one here goes onto the blow off valve. So as we lift off the throttle. If the turbos are producing boost this valve will open and that will let the excess turbo pressure bleed off because the throttle would have been would be closed. This one here comes off of the boost solenoid and this gets fed in to here. So that will take the manifold pressure, take it through here and down to the actuators on the wastegate to hold them closed to aid with spool up of the turbos. And then as the engine speed increases, the turbo pressure incre increases, it will open the valve to bleed off some of the air going to the turbos to limit how much boost is made. And the only other thing that needs doing is we need a line that goes off to the fuel, no that's wrong, that one goes onto there. That one doesn't go onto there. That one goes before the throttle body. So 
So that one goes down to there. And then we need a new one from there up to the fuel pressure regulator. Okay, I don't have a single piece of hose that will run from the manifold to the fuel pressure regulator, so I'll have to order some in. Uh, next thing, I guess, will be to finish off this wiring onto the fuel pressure sensor and get the coolant header tank back in and the air inlet back in. Okay, I've just realised that this pressure sensor is a three pin, not a two pin, so I need power, ground and signal out. I've given it power and signal out. So I'm going to need to bust back into this wiring loom again and pick up a signal ground. So let's strip this back and do it again. Right, in here is a thin black wire with two silver tracers and it will be that one there. So I need to splice into that and bring off a ground. Okay, I've now got my signal ground wire available. Let's put the plug on and finish taping up the loom. And with this one, we push the wires through the connector plug first before we attach the terminals to it. So pin A is ground, and on the casing there is the pin markings. So pin A, ground, that will be this black one. Pin B, is 5 volts and that then leaves pin C as signal. So that will run down along here around the corner so I want to just take a little bit of length off these probably down to the length of the signal cable then they can be stripped and crimped. So same as before, I'm going to put the terminal in the crimping tool first. Just on one click. Insert the wire and crimp. And repeat two more times. Okay, I, I don't think they're gripping the outer sheath particularly well, so I'm just going to go down on the next one down just a little bit, just to try to tighten them up a bit. That's much better. I can get away with going down to the second level. Right, these can now be pulled back, and that should be what we need. So let's pull these back. I'm not sure whether these need to be, I think these do need to be orientated the right way. Figure that out, I think it's that way around. Let's see. No, let's try, let's try that way then. Should pull through if it's correct. I don't want to pull too hard in case I pull the cable out the connector. Okay, that's it. They are all now pulled through properly.
push the waterproofing seal back up and into place. Okay, that looks good. And that should now plug onto there. Yes, very good. Okay, so now I'm gonna get some protective sheathing for that and tape it up. With the engine bay side of the fuel pressure sensor wiring complete, next thing I'm going to do is put the coolant header tank back in place here. Next on the agenda is these rubber pipes, which are, go from the air filters to the turbo inlets. Part of future plans is to improve this. I know it's bad. Those air inlet hoses are not the easiest to attach, but they do the job, so it's good enough for now. That's pretty much the top of the engine back together. So I think the next thing is to get the wheels back on it, get it on the ground, and then it's ready to be dragged onto a trailer to take away and have a fancy new radiator made up for it. Exciting. So that's the front end basically all back together. It's on the floor, wheel nuts are torqued up. Next thing to do is put the heat shield on the strut tops and then move inside the car and just check the wiring for the fuel pressure sensor that we've added. I've moved inside the car now to make a start on the wiring inside. First thing I need to do is get up under the dash where the ECU is located and move one of the wires for the fuel pressure sensor onto a different pin. So let's drag the camera around. I'll show you what's up under the dash. I'll warn you now, it's not. So here's yet again where my microphone stopped working. Yep. As I warned you, the wiring is not very tidy. Another job for future Gary is to do some more rewiring. So here is the Link ECU inside a GTO casing, and this is the internal fuse box and ETAX unit, which does things like windscreen wiper intermittent, and that annoying bonging sound where the keys are left in the ignition when the door is open. 
behind the carpet here is a bit of foam for cushioning underfoot and we can see the permanent 12 volt feed that we saw earlier that goes through under the car so let's get that ECU unbolted and I'll hand you back to past me Okay, so I need to remove connector one, which is this one over here, and there's a black and white cable going into pin seven, and that's what needs to come out. Okay, there is pin one, connector one, and that there is pin seven that I want to remove. Now that's disconnected, and I've got the right wire, which is that one there. I'm just going to snip this back a little bit. rather than re remove the pin. That comes through. The loom back here a bit. And that is then gonna go into this orange wire here goes into the expansion harness. That can come into there quite nicely. So a little bit of heat shrink to go over the connector that I've just, or the wire I've just chopped off. Okay, that can now get plugged back together and put back up into place. So that's that for today. The next thing I need to do is drag this onto a trailer and take it off for my radiator. So join me next time on Gary's Garage. Yeah.